everybody, this is Heather with the Eastern Panhandle Conservation District, and today we are going to be building a bee house. Um, this would be a great project in the early spring, especially for mason bees, because they are one of the first emerging bees that we have uh, here in West Virginia in the springtime. Um, it's late summer now, we can hear the, the cicadas have just started coming out uh, here in Shepherdstown. Um, but we might be able to find some other um, pollinator species that would be interested um, if we wanted to go ahead and put our bee houses out at this point in time in the late summer, um, which is right now it's about mid-July. Uh, um, so this is what the end product is going to look like. Um, and these are all kind of recyclable materials. Um, so that's the, the main drive behind this project is to use what you already have at home. Um, so we've got just a water bottle container. Um, these work great. Also, if you want to do something a little bit more rigid, um, you can use a, a sports drink um, bottle as well. You just want to cut off one of the ends. Um, so on this one, the water bottle, I had cut off the top. I had a, um, a sports drink bottle uh, from a, another project that I had and I cut off the opposite end, um, so I cut off the bottom, and we're gonna see that this is gonna be able to work just fine as well for this project. So whatever bottle you have, whatever end, um, it works a little bit better if you cut off the top just so you have this flat end to push against, um, but if that's, you know, you've already got water bottles that are, are cut up, then they will work just fine. Um, so to get started, um, you are going to need, of course, your bottle, and then either some parchment paper or paper straws, if you have them, um, the best thing to use would be hollowed out um, like reed tubes um, or if you had some bamboo that were nice and dry, um, you could use those as well. Um, but they're pretty hard to come by. Um, you can find them fairly easily now um, in some of your, your local um, like ag supply stores or um, pretty much anywhere on the internet. You could also order them in as well. So you need your actual nesting tubes your bottle, um, some, this is yarn, you can use string, um, hemp, whatever you have lying around to be able to attach um, your nesting house to um, either a tree or a side of a building or something like that. Um, you're also going to need either some clay mud or Play-Doh. Um, the mason bees specifically like the clay mud because if you know anything about clay, it's pretty sticky. Um, so it holds up very well compared to a more sandy or loamy type of soil. Um, so you need to have either, again, some mud or some clay. Um, and then you will also need um, some scissors to be able to cut to size your, your yarn and to also poke holes uh, into your bottles. That way you can thread that yarn through. And then I also recommend a marker. Um, and that's mainly to distinguish the top from the bottom of your tubes because, you know, the wind might get a hold of it, um, you get, might get a, a varmint of some sort into your nesting tube, and then you might find, you know, that all of your, your nesting tubes are on the ground, um, and you're not sure which end is which. So if you mark, you know, the, the top of the tube, then you know that's the top, um, and the bottoms will then go um, into the bottom of their feed tube. Um, that's just something you don't have to do, but it can be helpful, um, again, if you were to find that all of your, your nesting tubes had fallen out of their house. Um, so, uh, again, about mason bees, a lot of the times they're actually confused for a house fly because they're about the same size. Um, just remember that, you know, it's a bee, so it's going to make more of a buzzing sound. Um, and they are, as we said, one of the first emerging pollinators there in the early spring. So once you hit those three to four days in a row where it's about 50, 55 degrees, um, for this area that's about April or so, um, sometimes late March, um, that's when you're going to see these bees start coming out. Um, they are a solitary bee, so they're not really in colonies, which is why we have these individualized uh, nesting places for them. Um, some of their, their first foods that they're going to have would be cherry trees or choke cherries, um, willows, hawthorns, um, some of your um, berries, such as like the blackberry, um, is what their first food sources are going to be. Um, so to get started on our <clears throat> house here, here we have some parchment paper, um, and I had just cut this in half. Um, and what, what you're going to do is just you're going to tightly roll this and then 
as you're rolling along, you can see how you have this nice tightly rolled tube. Um, so what I'm going to do then, just to keep it all together, is take some tape. And this happens just to be double-sided tape, um, but you can use just regular uh, scotch tape as well. And again, it's just to hold your tube together. All right, so we have our rolled up tube. And again, as I had mentioned, you know, marking um, one side of the tube, that way you knew um, which way it went. So here we have a mark here. And then I'm going to, I've got a bucket of mud that I had created. Um, and it's, it's pretty sticky. Um, that way it doesn't, you know, kind of fall out um, when you're trying to do your project. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of stick my tube in and rub it up the side of the bucket here. Um, so kind of rub it up the bucket and then you can see we have kind of our plugged in. So what we're going to do now um, is I'll go ahead and put the, the top back on this one. And then we are just going to place it into our bottle. So you can see this bottle is a little bit long um, for these tubes. So you do want to have some overhang of the bottle. Um, that way the weather doesn't get into the tubes and make them moist because of course the one thing that we especially do not want is to have any kind of a fungus or mold, um, especially since we are using paper that would potentially hurt our bees. Um, so we're going to continue with this and again I also have um, some paper straws that were left over and haven't been used for years for a party. Um, so I'm going to do the same concept with that. I'm going to stick it into my bucket of mud here, roll it up the sides, making sure that I mark the top. And then I'm going to place it in the house. And I'm going to keep continuing that until I get this super, super packed with all these straws and paper. Um, I don't want any kind of movement, so you're just going to keep sticking it in as much as you can. Alright, so once you have that completed, um, now is the time to find somewhere to hang your new house. So you want it to be about three to four feet above ground and under some type of protection. So whether that is on the trunk of a tree um, or maybe underneath um, kind of the, the gutter of, of your house, that kind of area there alongside of your house, um, just somewhere where it is protected um, as best as possible from the elements. Um, it's also best if you have some type of a potential mud source directly under your nest as well. That way they don't have far to travel while they're making the individual plugs for each of the eggs. So there's going to be about five to six eggs um, in a tube. Um, so you want to make sure that um, those bees have space because it takes about ten trips um, per little, little home for those eggs. Um, to be able um, to fill it up. And they also have a really small foraging radius. So foraging radius is kind of where they're going to travel for their food. Uh, and it's only about 100 yards, which um, to put it in perspective is about the length of a football field. Um, so you want to make sure that they are going to have an adequate food supply. Otherwise, um, they either won't visit your nest or if they start at your nest and then realize food is scarce, they're going to travel somewhere else. Um, so you want to make sure that they do have a nice food supply. Um, and you also want to face this uh, south and east. Um, that way they get um, the better weather and the warm sun um, to help them stay warm and also um, help them with them merging. Um, they are also a really effective pollinator. Um, we always hear, you know, all of the hype about, you know, the European honeybee, um, which of course they are super important, um, not only for their honey, but also their pollinating capabilities. Um, but it takes about six mason bees um, to pollinate uh, one fruit tree. Um, and that can uh, take as much as 10,000 honeybees to pollinate one fruit tree. Um, so they're super, super effective. And of course they're also native. Um, which means that they are originally from here. They weren't brought in like that European honeybee. 
Um, so they are really important to our habitat and also um, really important to the ecosystem and keeping everything balanced. Um, so again, this is like late summer, so we're kind of um, late for to get a, a mason bee house put up, um, but of course other pollinators um, would appreciate the use of um, these twos. But if you want to target the mason bees specifically, um, putting them up um, in March, um, kind of mid-March or so, um, and then waiting for those temperatures to warm up, um, you'll, you'll start seeing those mason bees start to emerge and hopefully start using your mason bee nest. Um, so thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the Eastern Panhandle Conservation District on Facebook and also there's more educational videos on our YouTube channel as well. Thanks.